welcome to all of you on the second day of Tata Literature Live 2021. The festival is sponsored by Tata Steel and Tata Projects and powered by Godrej. Hi, I'm Mehal Acharya Dar and I'm very excited to be here at this session of the Little Festival, which is the special festival for children's books and literature at Tata Literature Live. Today we have a witty and funful story of two awful musicians who befriend ghosts. Our storyteller, who is a writer and translator from Bengali and English, an architect by profession and calls herself a wanderer by profession. Joining us all the way from New Haven, Massachusetts, our spinner of yarns, Tilothama Shom, will read, sing and narrate the adventures of Gooby the singer and Bagha the drummer. Sounds like so much fun. Over to you, Tilotama, ma'am. Thank you, Meher. Hi, everybody. Thanks a lot, Meher, for that wonderful, funny introduction. Uh, and hello to all my uh, listeners. So, when you say hero, what do you think of? Tall, broad men striding the earth. Perfect people fixing real problems, battling against all odds. I bet you don't think of bad musicians as heroes. Off-pitch singing that saved the world. Off-pitch Besura singing to save their own lives. Welcome to the world of Upendra Kishore Roy Chaudhary. Where heroes do not subscribe to stereotypes. The unlikely heroes I mention are Gupi the singer and Bagha the drummer who have the funniest adventures. So let me tell you a bit of that story. So Gupi is a really bad singer who loves to sing. And Bagha is an awful drummer who drives his family and village people crazy with his horrendous drumming. They live in neighboring villages and don't know each other until one day when both the failed musicians are thrown out of their respective villages because no one, not even their parents, wanted to hear their off-pitch Besura music anymore. So they run off into the nearby forest. For a while, Gupi and Bagha live alone in the woods. Sometimes Bagha would hear the wild calls of a terrible creature at the other end of the forest. And he would tremble in fear. Little did he know that these calls were nothing but Gupi Gain singing. Gupi too feared the terrible creature, but that was Bagha playing the drums. So both of them were so scared that, that uh, they resolved to run from the forest before it came and swallowed them alive. On their way out, they bumped, bumped into each other. Hey, who are you? Gupi said. I am Bagha Bain, replied Bagha. I am Gupi Gain. Where are you going? Bagha said, I have heard the cries of a terrible creature in the forest. If I cross its path, I won't survive. That's why I am running away. Me too, said Bagha. Where did you hear the creature calling from? From the eastern end of the forest. Gupi exclaimed and said, Oh, that is me singing. The terrible creature howls from the western end of the forest. Bagha laughed and said, but that is the sound of my drum. Now they understood that they had heard each other's music and had fled in fear. And they had a good laugh. Then Gupi said, I am Gupi Gain, the singer, and you are Bagha Bain, the drummer. If we get together, we can surely do something exciting. So Bagha agreed with Gupi and together they decided to perform a duet in front of the king hoping that as a reward he would gift them half his kingdom or marry off his daughter to one of them. Happy with their plan, Gupi and Bagha got on their boat to cross the river to reach the king's palace. But in an effort to entertain their fellow passengers with some thunderous music, the pair ended up startling the crowd so badly that the boat overturned. Clinging on to Bagha's drum for dear life, the two floated along the river until they reached a dark and scary forest. Bagha said, Brother Gupi, this is a really scary place. What do we do? Well, replied Gupi, I will sing and you play the drum. We will be eaten by tigers anyway. So let us at least show them our talent. 
Bagha agreed heartily and he said, You're right, brother. We should die like maestros, not like country bumpkins. And the two of them started their music. Bagha's drum was still wet from the river because of which it produced a deep and really somber sound. And Gufi was thinking that this was probably the last song of his life. So his voice was equally mournful. They sounded really grim as they sung the duet. Suddenly, strange things began to happen around them. Things that were hazy and black and huge seemed to be peeping from above the trees. Forest ghosts. The two friends stopped their music and curled up in fear. Their teeth were chattering so hard they could not even make a run for it. But the ghosts did not harm them. They were loving the music. When the pair stopped, the ghosts chorused in their nasal voices. Why did you stop? Play, play. As they resumed their music, the ghosts started climbing down from the trees and dancing around them. Gupi and Bagha had never been appreciated by an audience like this. They danced and sang all night. And as sunrise approached, the ghosts invited them to play at their king's son's wedding. We will reward you, they said. So come along. And they went. It's difficult to describe the music that they performed at the wedding. But as they bade farewell, the ghosts asked them, what do you wish for? Gopi replied, we want to please people with our music. The ghost said, very well. When you perform, your audience will be frozen at their places till you end your performance. What else do you wish for? We want to be well fed and well clothed at all times. The ghosts gave them a bag and said, When you place your hands inside this bag, you will get whatever you want to eat or wear. What else do you want? I can't think of anything more to ask for, said Goopy. The ghosts then handed them two pairs of shoes and said, When you wear these shoes and wish to go to any place, you will immediately be transported there. So Gupi and Gabagha get these three fantastic boons from the ghosts and from then on, their adventures take on a new turn as they magically transport themselves to different places and have lots of adventures. The magic lets them finally sing beautifully and the audience is rooted to the spot when they perform. They eat delicious meals fit for princes by just putting their hands in the bag and rattling off a menu. Palau, korma, pudding, chutney. And wearing those shoes, they'd clap their palms and name a place and instantly be transported there. Imagine how useful that would be now. No masks, no um, vaccination certificates, nothing to do. Just land yourself in any place that you want. That's how I, I'm in New Haven right now. Anyway, getting back to the musical uh, duo, I'll skip to a part of the story when they have met the king and having pleased him in various ways, they are now courtiers in the kingdom of Halla, which is a prosperous and peaceful kingdom. They live in the palace and occasionally, or rather frequently, they get an itch for adventure. A few months went by and they were happily settled in the palace of the king of Halla. They had become famous all over the world. Whoever heard them said, there haven't been such musical maestros in the past and there won't be in the future. The king loved them a lot and he could not survive a day without hearing their music. He would tell Gupi all about his life, the good and the bad. One day, Gupi noticed that the king looked forlorn. He seemed to be very thoughtful, as though anticipating a disaster. Finally, he told Gupi, I'm in great trouble. God knows what will happen. The Raja of Shundi is coming to attack my kingdom. Now, the king of Shundi was the same king who at one time, in the story, had tried to kill Gupi and Bagha in a terrible fire. As soon as he heard the name of the king of Shundi, Gupi had a brilliant idea. He told the king of Halla, Your majesty, do not worry. Order this servant of yours and I will make this into a comedy of errors. 
The king smiled and said, Gupi, you are a musician. You have no idea about wars. The king of Shundi has a really strong and large army. How will I defeat them? Gupi said, if you give me permission, I can try. It won't cause any harm. The king said, okay, you do what you wish. And Gupi was very pleased and called Bagha to discuss his plan. Every night, they would go to Shundi and wander around the palace gathering local news. The battle plans were being made in Shundi and they seemed frightening. If they attacked Halla with that plan, there would be no saving the kingdom of Halla. Prayers were being held in the palace temple every day. And the king was planning to leave for Halla with his army after pleasing the gods with his prayers. Gupi and Vagha saw the preparations and locked themselves in their room. They put their hands in the magic bag and said, We want some new and delicious sweets. At this command, the sweets that came out of the bag were indescribable. Nobody had seen or eaten such sweets before. Gupi and Vagha took these delectable sweets and went and sat on the dome of the temple. Below them, the prayer ceremonies were going on in full swing. The temple courtyard was filled with people. The fragrance of incense sticks, the sound of corn shells and the chatter of people talking. Gupi and Bagha dropped the bag of sweets into the crowd from their perch on the temple tower and watched the fun. In the dark, amidst the smoke from the incense sticks, nobody could see them sitting up there. There was a minute's silence when the sweets landed in the yard. People jumped in surprise and some screamed and ran away. A few brave people picked up some sweets and looked at them closely under the light of the lamp. And then one of them closed his eyes and popped the sweet into his mouth. The taste left him speechless. After that, he kept picking sweets from the floor and putting them into his mouth, dancing and shouting in delight. Suddenly, the whole courtyard was full of people scrambling to eat the sweets and snatching them from each other's hands. Some people rushed to the king and announced, Your Majesty, the gods are so happy with our prayers that they have sent divine sweets from heaven. The sweets are so tasty. As soon as the king heard that, he hurriedly ran towards the temple, tucking the pleats of his ceremonial dhoti. But alas, by then all the sweets were over. The courtyard was swept for some crumbs for the king, but nothing was found. The king was really annoyed. This is so unfair. I do the prayers and all of you eat the divine sweets. Not a crumb left for me. I will behead all of you. The people trembled in fear and begged, Please, your highness, we didn't finish the sweets. They just disappeared suddenly after we had eaten some. Please forgive us today. Tomorrow we will keep all the sweets for you, sir. The king said, all right, remember that. Don't you dare eat any sweets tomorrow. Next day, the king came to the temple in the morning and waited, staring at the sky, praying that the sweets would fall. The rest of the crowd sat at a distance watching the fun. The prayers were going on with even greater pomp and everyone was thinking, that today the gods will send sweets for the kings, which would be even more delicious. Later that night, Gupi and Bagha got a variety of new and delicious sweets from their magical bag and sat on the temple tower. They were wearing glamorous dresses also from the magic bag. Crowns on their heads, necklaces around their necks, bracelets on their wrists and earrings on their ears. They were dressed like the gods. Nothing was visible through the smoke, but the king was sitting and staring at the sky. Suddenly, Gupi and Bagha laughed out aloud and dropped the sweets on the king's head. He screamed and jumped three feet into the air. Then he recovered and started stuffing his mouth with sweets with both hands while dancing a merry little jig at the same time. While this was going on, Gupi and Bagha came down from the top of the temple and stood in front of the king of Shundi. The gods have come, everybody shouted, and started prostrating themselves on the floor as a mark of respect. The king just lay flat on the ground in front of them and kept striking his head on the ground. 
Guppy said kindly, Your Majesty, we enjoyed your dance a lot. Come, let us embrace. The king was overwhelmed. How many people had the good fortune to be embraced by the gods? They started embracing and the crowds yelled, Victory! Victory! And Gupi Bagha took this opportunity, grabbed the king from both sides and said in a loud voice, Now we will go to our room. And immediately the three of them were transported to their room. The crowds and the temple stood staring at the sky with their mouths open for a long time. When the king did not return, they went back to their homes and said, What a miracle we witnessed. The king ascended to heaven in his human form. The gods came themselves to take him away. By then, the king had fainted in Gupi and Bagha's laps. He remained unconscious for a while, even after reaching their room. At dawn, when he opened his eyes, he saw them and he was scared. He fell at their feet at once and trembled and begged, Sirs, please don't eat me. I will sacrifice 200 buffaloes in your names and pray for your mercy. Gupi said, Your Highness, don't be afraid. We are not ghosts and we won't eat you. The king was not convinced. He did not utter a word. He just held his head in his hands and shook in fear. After that, Bagha went to the king of Halla and said, Last night we captured the king of Shundi. What is your command now? The king of Halla was surprised. He said, Bring him here. When the two kings met, the king of Shundi understood that he had been captured. He realized that he would not be able to conquer Halla and maybe he would be killed. But the king of Halla did not kill him. He just took his crown and his kingdom away. Then he told Gupi and Bagha, You have saved us. Otherwise I would have lost my country and my life. I am giving you half the kingdom of Shundi to rule and my two daughters in marriage to both of you. After that, there were celebrations galore. Gupi and Bagha became the sons-in-law of the king of Halla and ruled Shundi while practicing their wonderful music. So that's how Gupi and Bagha became heroes. Not with weapons in war, but with music and mishti. Mishti which is the Bengali word for sweets. This book, this story was adapted uh, to make a Bengali movie many years ago by Satyajit Ray, a very famous director. And there were some lovely songs in the movie that Gupi and Bagha sang. I thought I will sing a few Besura lines for all of you. This song sing, talks about how riches and wealth cannot make you happy. Just by being a king, you may not be happy. You have to find joy in nature and the smaller things that will definitely bring you happiness and peace. So here goes a few lines from this song. Agje chilo raja Agje chilo raja Tar bhari duk Bhari duk Dekho raja Kande raja Aha raja Bechara Raja Arbhari Duk Dukho ki she hai Dukho ki she hai Abhaga Rabhabe jeno shudhu nai Jar bhandare rashi rashi Shona dana thasha thashi taro hai Jeno she o shukhi nai Dukho ki she jai, Dukho ki she jai, Prashadi te bondi rava boru dai, boru dai. Ek parta je shonar godi, Raja mathe di, Me me jodi hawa khai, Tabi raja shanti pai, Raja Shanti Pai, Shanti Pai. So the song says that if the king, the Raja, if he gets off his golden throne and comes out into the open fields and breathes in the fresh air, 
then he will find his peace and he will find his joy. So that was a little taste of Gupi and Vagha's musical and ghostly adventures. If you want to read the full story, you can do that in Bengali or in the English English uh, translation that I did. It's a really fun book with some lovely illustrations by Shyam Mukherjee. And this is what it looks like. That's a beautifully illustrated cover of the book. And you'll get it in all bookstores. So goodbye for now. I'd say read lots of fun stories. Eat lots of sweets. Mishti. And definitely get a pair of good shoes. Travel as much as you can. Go to all the magical places that the shoes take you. Wishing all of you many great adventures. Bye. And over to you, Meher. Sorry about that. Uh, I think I was on mute. So let's start that again. Thank you so much, Tirotama. That was a super fun session. And the singing, of course, was not Besura at all. It was great fun. It was beautiful. Thanks, Tirotama, for that lovely story. I was completely enchanted by the narration. And of course, thank you to all of you for joining us today. Our next session for children is Telling Tall Tales, Why Writing for Children is More Fun for the ages 11 to 13. So if you're pretty much a child of any age, but especially 11 to 13, you can join us, where Matt Haig will be in conversation with Shabnam Minwala. Remember to get your parents to buy the adventures of Gubi the singer and Bhaga the drummer from our virtual bookstore, landmarkxcit.com. And many more books are available. So definitely go out and get your parents to buy you tons of books to read. Huge thank you to our title sponsor Tata and co-sponsors Tata Steel and Tata Projects and the festival is powered by Godridge. Thank you for being at Tata Literature Live 2021. Tell your adults at home to keep logging in for all the sessions of the festival for another three days because here's where you can enjoy literature unmasked. Stay safe. Keep reading.